Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to look over questions 11 to 20 of the multiple choice section of the 2016 National 5 Chemistry paper. If you haven't already you can watch part 1 of my video which I will link down below and in a card in the corner. Here we have question 11. The systematic name for the structure shown is what? To tackle a question like this I would just try and name it without looking at the answers that have been given to you. So you want to number your chain from the end closest to the double bond. So we have one, two, three, four, five carbons in the longest chain. So this would be pent one ene if there was nothing attached to it. But you have these two groups here attached and they are both methyl groups. There are two of them and they're on carbons two and three. So this goes at the start of the name. So you have two, three, dimethyl, pentane, pent one e. So if we have a look at the answers, it would be B. Question 12, we have two isomers of butene. Uh, which of the following structures represents a third isomer of butene? So here we have but one ene and here we have but two ene. So I'm going to write the names underneath. A good way of looking for other isomers are to try and name the structures that you have because if it has a different name but also has the same number of carbons and hydrogens then it will be an isomer. So this one also has four carbons and eight hydrogens. However, this is just but one ene flipped over, so this is not an isomer. B, we have the same numbers of carbon and hydrogens. We have a chain of three, which would be propene. And on the second carbon, we have a methyl group. So this would be two methyl propene. This one here doesn't have enough carbons and hydrogens, and neither does D. So B is our answer. Which of the following structures represents an ester? So here you need to know your functional groups. So an ester functional group has a C double bond O to an O to another C. So if we look at A, we have a C double bond O, O and C. So this would be our answer. B you should recognise as a carboxylic acid. C and D, you won't recognise until you get to higher. These are carbonyl groups. Question 14. The lowest temperature at which a hydrocarbon ignites is called its flash point. You're given some information in the table about boiling points and flash points of different hydrocarbons and you need to identify the correct statement. The easiest way to go about this is to go through each statement in turn and work out if it's right. So we've got octane will ignite at zero degrees. So here is octane, its boiling point is 126 degrees and its flash point is 15. That is above 0 degrees, so it won't ignite at 0 degrees. Hydrocarbons with, with the same molecular mass have the same flash point. So here you need to look for two that have the same formula. So we'd be looking at hexene and cyclohexane and then comparing their flash points and you can see that they are different. The flash point of a hydrocarbon increases as the boiling point increases. So if we have a look at um, hexane, heptane and octane where we have the boiling point increasing and you can see that the flash point does also increase so C is our answer. Question 15. Which of the following metals can be obtained from its ore by heating with carbon monoxide? You may wish to use the data book to help you. So by looking in the data book, you can see what the order of reactivity is. So you would have calcium, magnesium and aluminium that are all very reactive and nickel is less so. So magnesium, aluminium and calcium are all extracted using electrolysis whereas nickel could be extracted using carbon monoxide. Question 16. We're looking at polyesters. Polyesters are a condensation polymer and there's different ways that you can make them. You can use monomers where you have an two OH groups so that's a diol and then carbox a dicarboxylic acid as well. 
or you could use something which had both functional groups on it. So the monomers themselves don't have to be the same, they can be different. They can be unsaturated but they're often not. They must have one functional group per um, monomer because we need to have this difunctional group where this can join and then this other functional group can, group can join to the next one. So the answer is D. Question 17. Some smoke detectors make use of radiation which is very easily stopped by tiny smoke particles moving between the radioactive source and the detector. So here we have a picture of the radioisotope. Here are some smoke particles and the detector. The most suitable type of radioisotope for the smoke detector would be what? So it needs to be something which could be easily stopped. So the most easily stopped type of radiation is an alpha. So we can ignore B and D. And it needs to have a long enough half-life that um, this decay would be continual. So the answer is A. Question 18. Which particle will be formed when an atom of thorium-234 emits a beta particle? So if we write out the equation for this. A beta particle has the symbol of zero mass, minus one here, and it is an electron. So we need the mass on either side to be the same. So whatever particle you create is going to have a mass of 234, but the atomic number is going to increase by one. So when you do 91 minus one, we get 90. If we look up this in the data book, you'll find that the symbol is PA, and that is answer A. Question 19. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,600 years. An analysis of charcoal from a wood fire shows that its carbon-14 content is 25% of that in living wood. How many years have passed since the wood for the fire was cut? So if we start off with 100% of carbon-14, after one half-life we will have 50% and after a second half-life we will have 25%. So we've had two half-lives, each of which have been 5,600 years. So the full length of time will be 11,200 years, which is C. And finally, question 20. A solution of potassium carbonate made up using tap water was found to be cloudy. This could result from the tap water containing which of the ions, and you may wish to use a data book to help you. So you are looking for which of these ions would react with the carbonate to form a sol an insoluble compound that would be a precipitate and would make the water look cloudy. Lithium carbonate is very soluble. Calcium carbonate is insoluble. Sodium carbonate is very soluble. And ammonium carbonate is very soluble. So your answer here is B, calcium ions. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates and new videos. Bye for now.